Hello everyone, myself Liz Smirin Peter. In this video lesson, we will be discussing Concord in grammar. Well, some of you might be confused with what it means. Don't worry, let me help you. When we use the word Concord in everyday speech, it means agreement or harmony between people or groups. I repeat, when we use the word Concord, in everyday speech, it means agreement or harmony between people or groups. While concord in grammar is the agreement between elements of a sentence. These elements include subjects, objects, verbs and adverbs. So concord in grammar is the agreement between elements of a sentence. These elements include subjects, objects, verbs and adverbs. When speaking or writing in English, it is vital that you follow the rules of subject-verb agreement. In simple terms, this is making sure that the subject agrees with the verb. For example, you are and not you am. By using the correct subject-verb agreement, you will be able to make much more understandable and grammatically correct sentences which will make your English sound more fluent. Now, you might be thinking that you understand subject-verb agreement. It's simple and easy, right? But one of the most common grammar mistakes that English learners make is to do with subject-verb agreement. Don't worry. Standard rules of Concord will help you. They are 24 in number. We will deal 12 Concord rules in this video lesson, rest of which will be discussed in the session that follows. Rule number one, subject and verb Concord. Subject and verb Concord states that when the subject in a sentence is singular, the verb should also be singular. I repeat. When the subject in a sentence is singular, the verb should also be singular. For example, she goes. She is a singular subject, so it should be followed by a singular verb, and that is goes. This rule also states that when the subject is plural, the verb should be plural. The girls go. The girls being plural subject should be followed by a plural verb. Moving to rule number two, subject and object concord. When everybody or everyone is used, the object must be singular and not plural. I repeat, when everybody or everyone is used, the object must be singular and not plural. Here's an example. Everybody knows his or her name and not everybody knows their name. Okay, everybody knows his or her name, his or her. Rule number three, the principle of proximity. This principle states that when there's a list of nouns or pronouns at the level of the subject, it is the nearest noun or pronoun to the position of the verb that will determine the choice of the verb. Let me repeat. This principle states that when there is a list of nouns or pronouns at the level of the subject, it is the nearest noun or pronoun to the position of the verb that will determine the choice of the verb. For example, if James fails his examination, his teachers, his parents, his friends or John dash to be blamed. Here, the correct option to fill that blank space is is and not are because at the subject level, we have his teachers, his friends, his parents and John. So there are four different people. In order to choose the correct verb, we will need to choose the nearest subject to the gap as a subject. So this is, uh, here it is, John. To be noted, what makes us consider the only one noun or pronoun used in this sentence is because of the use of OR. 
However, if the conjunction used is and, and instead of or, all the nouns or pronouns used in the sentence will be considered as the subject. For example, if James fails his examination, his teachers, his parents, his friends and John are to be blamed. But if the question comes in this manner, the answer will be different. If James fails his examination, his teachers, his parents, his friends or I dash to be blamed. The correct answer here is am because the pronoun I is the nearest subject to the gap. So if I is the subject, the verb that goes with it is am. Okay, rule number four, a pair of concord. When a pair of is used, the verb must be singular. For example, a pair of trousers, not trouser, lies on the bed. A pair of scissors lies on the table. I hope it's clear. Moving to rule number five, national concord. National concord is also called collective noun concord. A collective noun is a noun that stands for many units that constitute that single noun. Let's check some examples. An audience which means people who watch programs. The congregation which means worshippers. Clergy which means religious officers. A club which means the association of members. So whenever you use a collective noun, the verb that follows must be a plural verb. I repeat, so whenever you use a collective noun, the verb that follows must be a plural noun. Sorry, plural verb. For example, club is a collective noun for members. So we can also say members of this association. Our club meet once in a week. However, in some situations, a singular verb goes with a collective noun. Here is the principle. If the collective noun performs an action, a plural verb follows. But if not, a singular verb follows. If the collective noun performs an action, a plural verb follows. But if not, a singular verb follows. So this is an exception. I'll give you an example for this. Our club is celebrating its 20th anniversary today. In the above statement, you can see that our club performs no action, hence a singular verb is used. But our club are going on a vacation tomorrow. See, in this example, you can see that the above sentence is different from the first sentence. Here, the club is performing an action, going. Hence, we will use a plural verb in compliance with the rule. The audience are partial in their judgment of the winner. The answer is R because the collective noun performs an action that is judgment. I hope it's clear. Moving to rule number six, accompaniment concord. When any of these following words are used, the subject of the clause would be the noun and pronoun that comes before the marker of accompaniment. Words like as much as, alongside, as well as, together with, no less than, in association with, including, like, with, and in collaboration with, etc. Let's check some examples. Example 1. Mary, as well as her friends, is beautiful. The answer is, is because Mary is the noun that comes before as well as, hence Mary is the subject and it is a singular noun, hence a singular verb. So here Mary is a subject, which is a singular noun, hence we have a singular verb. Another example. The little kids alongside their parents are here. The answer is are and not is because the little kids come before alongside. The subject is plural, hence a plural verb. Little kids is a subject and it's plural, so we have a plural verb. 
moving to rule number seven, more than concord. When more than is used, the word or number that comes after more than will determine the next verb. For example, more than two apples are here. Another example, more than one orange is here. In the first statement, the answer is R, not is, because two attracts R. But in the second statement, the correct option is is and not R, because one attracts is. Please note, do not think because more than one means at least two that you will use a plural verb after. No, you will use a singular verb. I hope it's clear. Rule number eight, indefinite pronoun concord. When any of the following words are used, you should use a singular verb. Such words as everybody, everything, everyone, everywhere, no one, nothing, nobody, nowhere, something, someone, somebody, anyone, anything, anybody, anywhere and each. In all, in all these cases, the next verb must be singular. Here are some examples. Nothing goes. Everybody likes him. Everybody thinks he stole the money. Rule number nine, relative concord. When who, whose, which and that refers to a previously mentioned noun or pronoun, such noun is a relative noun. Example, one of the farmers who planned on the farm has been asked to withdraw. Moving to rule number 10, uncountable nouns of concord. Countable nouns are nouns that can be quantified in units and numbers. That is, are nouns that can be counted. For example, chairs, you can count them, tables, phones, and so forth. Uncountable nouns are nouns that cannot be quantified in units and numbers. Example, water, you can't count, you cannot count water, or you cannot count information or equipment. Note, all uncountable nouns will avoid S at the back. It is wrong to use any of these words below. Example, informations, clothes, equipments, furnitures, machineries, datas, advices, evidences, wells, and so forth. Instead, you say a piece of information, evidence, data, cloth, equipment, etc. It is also wrong to say machineries. Instead, you say a machine or two machines. Other examples of nouns that attract plural verbs are the police work hard but that policeman works hard. Police and policemen are collective nouns that is why they attract a plural verb. But policeman is not a collective noun but a singular noun hence a singular verb. The headquarters look palatial. Aircraft make traveling easier but that chopper, airbus or aer airplane makes traveling easier. In all these examples, they attract plural verb because the subject in each example is a collective noun. Moving to rule number 11. Double title subject concord. This rule states that when two subjects are joined together by and and the two subjects refers to only one person or thing, a singular verb should be used. When two subjects are joined together by and, but the two subjects refer to only one person or thing, a singular verb should be used. For example, our principal and mathematics teacher knows me. In the above sentence, our principal and mathematics teacher is not two different people, but our principal is also a mathematics teacher. 
hence the subject is our principal and it is a singular noun hence singular verb consider this example our principal and the mathematics teacher this is quite different from the first sentence because the principal and the mathematics teacher are two different subjects because of the use of the mathematics teacher rule number 12 subjects that are joined by and in a sentence use a plural verb subjects that are joined by either or neither nor use a singular verb for example radha and meera are coming home neither akshay nor rohit is coming home my dad or my mom is arriving today so for now let's wind up this video lesson hope you enjoyed this session we have 12 more concord rules which will be discussed in the upcoming session stay safe and healthy until then thank you